it is a remarkable variety and, and I think it's intrinsically linked to the history because of its adaptability. I mean it makes amazing fortified wine which it did for many many years and um, obviously that's now led with those fantastic old vineyards is one, one of the reasons that they've been kept is they make great fortified wine as well and we've got this amazing resource so dating right back to uh, the 1840s. There is a stereotypical view of, uh, of Brossa Shiraz which annoys me a little bit to be quite honest and particularly in some parts of the world that think it's, it's big and um, uh, you know, fruit, fruit forward and, um, and, and high, high octane, high, higher alcohol which is not necessarily the case at all. A lot of it is defined by what area in the Brossa you're talking about but also the winemaking technique helps define it and well managed vineyards help to define it as well in terms of um, you don't have to wait and wait and wait as the sugar gets higher to get flavour ripeness and tannin ripeness. If you've got a well managed vineyard you get, you get that flavour before there's too much sugar so you can keep alcohols under control. I mean there's certainly a big difference between uh, the general expression of Barossa Valley compared to Eden Valley. Eden Valley, yes it's it, it is mostly cooler in some areas, a little bit higher than Brossa as well, and it can have that more aromatic expression. Shiraz can be quite an aromatic variety. It's just such an asset to have these old, old vineyards, and old vineyards, not just old vineyards, old vineyards managed by the same families for many, many years as well, which is just such a wealth of experience. And uh, now that we are very much part of the international wine world we've got credentials. I mean, you just have to look at the reputation that uh, you know, a, a lot of the, you know, the great makers of Shiraz have established.